For a heart muscle cell to contract, it has to depolarize. That is, the ion balance on either side of its cell membrane has to change suddenly and in such a way that the inside of the cell becomes less negatively charged. In a heart muscle cell, this causes contraction, i.e. a heartbeat. But although it might look like the heart contracts all at once, there is in fact a chain reaction of depolarization which begins up here in the heart and then spreads throughout it. It's like when you get a little tingle in your nose which eventually provokes a sneeze. So when I say the heart depolarizes in a wave, what I mean is that the cells are spreading this chain reaction of depolarization through the heart like this. And for our purposes today, it's useful to, to think of this wave as analogous to the concept of current, electrical current, because it's essentially electrical energy, or more specifically, electrochemical energy that is moving in particular directions. Now, how about if I was to say we put a, a piece of metal here and another one here, then we can actually measure the current which is traveling between these two points. It's like using a voltmeter, measuring the voltage in a circuit. If the current's flowing this way, voltage is positive when we record it like this. So if this electrochemical current was fluctuating in this circuit, going this way, then back this way again, our voltage measurement here would fluctuate too. This is a video about electrocardiography or ECG, not electrical engineering, but this is essentially what our ECG electrodes serve to measure. These electrodes are made mostly from silver, which is an excellent conductor of electricity. And they're sensitive enough to pick up on voltage changes and the direction of current movement inside the heart. Now, when we, when we place two electrodes at different points on the body, we are creating an imaginary circuit. This invisible connection that the body facilitates between these two electrodes, we call a lead. And by convention, our first ECG lead has a negative pole here and a positive pole here. Also by convention, when a current heads toward the positive pole of a lead, it's registered as a positive deflection on the ECG tracing. Remembering that our heart's oriented here in the body like this, so if current was heading in this direction, the resulting ECG trace would look like this. This is a positive deflection. And the magnitude of this deflection is indicative of the amount of heart tissue that's depolarizing in that moment. So this arrow growing longer here is representing how much tissue is being depolarized in this direction. And that's represented like this on the ECG trace. So with that in mind, let's draw out the heart and appreciate how the current flows through it with each heart beat. It starts off in an area called the sinoatrial node, which is located here in the right atrium, just near the entrance of the superior vena cava. The current spreads throughout the atrium evenly and overall in this direction toward the atrioventricular node. So we then face a short pause here at the atrioventricular node before the current then spreads through the bundle of hiss which is a stack of thick nerve fibres in the interventricular septum. The charge then propagates through the ventricles, which hold the charge for a moment before repolarizing. Repolarization is the process of each cell returning to its resting membrane potential. So we talked about depolarization as the inside of the cell becoming less negatively charged. Repolarization is the process of it becoming more negatively charged again. Let's watch the ECG trace as we go through this flow of current again. Now the lead only picks up on the extent to which this magnitude arrow aligns with its vector or its directionality. So as the current heads through the atria, there's positive movement on the trace whether the vector of the lead lines up with the vector of current. 
Following this, the magnitude weakens. The trace returns back to its baseline and then there's a moment of pause. There's a little negative movement because the, the right side of the bundle of Hiss depolarizes before the left side, so the magnitude's actually facing this way, away from the lead, so a negative deflection. Then we have this positive deflection and then a massive negative deflection as the current spreads through the ventricles and then we finally return back to normal, to baseline. This is an interesting and, and quite tricky point coming up. When we think about repolarization, our next stage of the cycle, we can think of it as a spread of negative current. Because depolarization, as I mentioned before, is the process of the inside of the cell becoming less negative. So repolarization is that of the inside of the cell becoming more negative. So even though the wave of repolarization moves in this direction, because we're thinking of this as the spread of negative current, it'll be registered like this on the ECG trace. So this negative current I have here is a blue rather than a red arrow. And as a result, we'll see a, a positive deflection in the ECG. We call this part of the ECG trace the P wave, then the QRS complex, the ST segment, and the T wave. And that's how the trace is, is produced for lead one of our ECG. Most ECG machines have 12 leads, and the, the principles are exactly the same for each of these other leads. We'll now jump into a 3D depiction of the heart because that'll make more sense for describing the, the orientation of the remaining leads. So lead two goes from our right hand to our foot and lead three from left hand to foot. And from these three, we can then calculate where a relative midpoint is. It's a simple mass formula, which I won't go into now, but that will provide us with a hypothetical central electrode. And we can then use that imaginary electrode as a basis to calculate further leads. We can determine the voltage between here and here, for example here and here, and then here and here. And these leads are called AVF, AVL, and AVR, which stands for augmented vector foot, augmented vector left, and augmented vector right. They are augmented by their, their use of this imaginary central electrode. And if we continue to use that as a, a negative pole or a negative electrode, we can apply electrodes across the chest, six of them, in fact, to also get leads in these directions. These are named V1 through to V6. They're also called the precordial leads. And so now we have this, this beautiful picture of the current in the heart in a whole range of axes. And the beauty of this is that it allows us to localize problems in space. We can pinpoint where a problem is occurring in the heart based on which leads show us changes. These changes might be uh, caused by an increase in the local level of potassium, for example, which is released by dying cells. This will interfere with the way cells in this area repolarize because repolarization mostly occurs by removal of potassium from cells. If there's plenty of potassium floating around in the extracellular fluid, then more will rush in when the cell is depolarizing. And then when the cells repolarize, there's this huge potassium dumping and the charge change in that repolarization process will be amplified you'll get this really high T wave as a result, which is one of the earliest signs of a myocardial infarction. So I hope that's given you a rough idea of how we generate an ECG. In the next video, we'll run through a simple approach for how to read them. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.